glad that you are watching. And I just wanted to introduce to you, this is Nettie Cruz. And she is my guest today. You're going to fall in love with her just like I have. And uh, welcome to Crave Talks Live at 1225. And I know you heard Tommy last week, and if you didn't, please look at that last one. He's amazing at what he does for events and how he brings in the arts and how he brings in creativity. It's incredible. And now we're hearing Nettie. And Nettie has been with me for eight years which is incredible, she's been here, and for the last, like, gosh, eight years, we've been developing great artists, and you started, you were just a, a housewife in New Jersey, Yeah. and how did you get here, and oh, then tell gosh. us your journey of the pathetic heart. Well, we came here, of course, from that home, of course. and uh, it was the first time I saw arts on stage, and I was like, oh. <gasps> classes of prophetic arts yeah. and everything just started rolling from then and started helping you out and you just, you just became the she she became right there we were <laughs> we were in this together yeah and we started our own little arts apprenticeship in the community and it's been yeah. outrageously good oh my gosh every tuesday night we get together and we help both students in BSSM and people within the church mm -hmm. and all the painters that paint here on stage and we get together and we we just have a great time of number one learning mm -hmm. from one another That's hearing really. from what the Holy Spirit is sharing testimonies which yeah. Ned is going to be sharing but also just being family together and just doing fun stuff together and it's been an incredible journey it has. and uh, and it's been amazing just to see where you started and now oh. what you're doing. I, I would never believe I'd be here right now. <laughs> I, I, have, I have to ask this question, like, what, what prompted you to take that leap of faith and to say, you know what, I can do this? What happened that caused that to, to stir in your heart? First of all, I had to let go of fear. Ah, oh, that's a big one. Yeah. I'm up to. here in front of thousands of people. That's, this is being streamed. This is on Sundays. You can watch, by the way, you can watch on Sundays. Bethel has live streaming. And we have live artists and dancers. And, of course, the worship that's happening. So you can kind of, you'll be seeing Nettie. You'll be seeing yeah. me. You'll be seeing the whole team. And and you'll be seeing what, what can happen there. But there is something that happens when you realize that you're not just painting in your studio at your, yeah. in your home, but you're deciding to paint up on stage. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, the testimonies and, and the feeling. I mean, we, we, we are on stage to, to do what in, what's in God's heart, you know, what yeah. He has given us, and to share it and put it out there. But also, we, sometimes we forget that it prophesies to us. Oh, yeah. It prophes There's been time that I've been up there, and I've been in <laughs> tears, and I'm like, I need to see what I'm painting, because it's just speaking to me and yeah. I didn't really realize until that moment that I'm starting to paint up there how much it's interacting with me okay. it's true yeah it's like and I know like because you're, we're, we're, we're prophetic artists we not only want to like paint a beautiful painting in the presence of God but we want to create something that is going to prophesy that means that it's going to declare life Mm -hmm. into the people, whether it's at a conference, whether it's a church on a Sunday Absolutely, night, yes. wherever we are, that there's something about us linking in with what the Holy Spirit's saying. And, and yeah. tell us, like, how do you do that? What If a person has never done this before, what would be the difference between doing, like, just a painting, a painting, or painting prophetic art? What is, what is the well, difference? Well, first of all, it's not about performance. It's about presence. Come on. It's about presence, getting into God's presence and what He's giving you. And, and God loves to use people that feel like they're not equipped and they're not qualified for this. <laughs> he loves using those people. I've seen stick people that have been very anointed stick people. That's right. He just wants you to go through the process of trusting Him and what He's giving you and taking that risk. Just like a prophetic word, you take that risk and putting it out there and you'd be surprised how many hearts you've touched it's so true and it's like for people that are professional artists out there there's something that happens when you allow the presence of god to come upon you and you create things much in a in a shorter period of time 
And even though you don't have the time, I've known for me that I can paint something supernaturally because God just wants me to create it. Yeah. And other times, like Nettie, she'll take time beforehand to process. She'll take days working on this mm -hmm. piece because she feels like it's a special word. And she'll be mm -hmm. sharing about that art in just a second. But to me, what's amazing is we know what happens because people come up and they share with us and they go, oh my gosh, you painted this vision for me or you did this. And all of a sudden you're realizing the Holy Spirit anointed me. And even though we might not even be finished with the art, it speaks volumes to the people. Absolutely. And yeah. it's not just one time, but it's all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And people get touched. Um, I, I had a painting that this woman was, um, she, she, she had this dream and of, of this tree. And her hu husband kept asking her, is that the tree you saw? Is that the tree you saw? And when I'm up there, she hits her husband really hard and says, that's the tree I saw in my dream. <laughs> so it, it's just amazing it how is. people are receiving from God, receiving words and confirmation and yeah. peace oh, just yeah. by what you're displaying up there. Sometimes we don't realize, okay, why are you doing this? But hey, I'm taking the risk. And Come you on. do it. And then later on, you start realizing, hey, th this was for that person. Yeah. Yeah, it, it could have launched them into the destiny. It could have been a confirmation. Oh, yeah. It could have been a vision. Oh, Who yeah. knows? Oh, yeah. So uh, if, if you right now are watching, this is Nettie Cruz, <laughs> one of my dear friends, and an artist that paints on stage at Bethel Church and is in our community. And she's sharing her journey about how she started. If, if a lot of you are going, man, I would love that, but I have fear of starting, or I'm a great artist, Am I really needed in the church? Um, or if you're a person who goes, wow, when I was a kid I used to do that, but I stopped doing that. I want you to know that today is your day of breakthrough. Come on. Yes. That today you don't have to wonder. God has anointed you. The church needs you. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need you. And so we just want to declare over you today yes. that today is your day. Absolutely. Now, Nettie has a painting back here. And... I love this painting. <laughs> but share with us about why you painted this and some testimony behind it. Well, um, I painted it at a women's conference, and I felt that the Lord was um, taking off that, those lies that many women have had that you cannot do this, you cannot do that, especially in the church. You're not allowed, or, or, or you're a mom, you can't. Like, I, I was a full-time mom, and, yeah. and that's all I did. And yeah. it's like these lives, I, I'm not allowed, or I can't, I don't have the ability. Yeah. Well, I, I painted this for that, to break off those lives. Come and on. not only those lives, there's many other lives that we've accepted. Yeah. It's to break off those lives and, and set you on fire for God. But well, amazing things have happened. I mean, um, someone bought a print and gave it to her sister. Her sister doesn't know the Lord or anything. And as soon oh as her gosh. sister received the print and grabbed it, started shaking and crying got totally restored in that moment Woo, come on yes. i find it yes yes and then yes there, there was someone that was hanging at bethel and, and this gentleman had so a brain disease so what she's disease. saying is that it was hanging on the wall so we have paintings in our church that you can go and you can look at and there's a prophetic meaning and a title by it and so there was a person that was walking by this painting Yes, and he started staring at it, and he felt like the angel took the sword and touched his brain. What? <laughs> yes. That's crazy. So I believe that man got healed with his brain because That's he right. started yeah. not having any symptoms. I heard about symptoms. that there wasn't any symptoms. Now, yeah. this, is, this is crazy. Yeah, you guys got to hear <laughs> this. Like, this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, this happens all the time where people create art. And people get healed and so when I speak different places this happens all the time mm -hmm. but this is a man who's just walking down the hallway looks at it and because it's prophetic art it has a supernatural realm and bam he sees this and it cuts off yeah the, what was wrong with him I, I don't know exactly the, the cut, okay. but he, he after that moment he no longer had the symptoms he was having because of that brain thing that he oh, had. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty intense. Yeah. That's intense. Yeah, and I've had so many people that have 
stand in front of it, you have falling to the ground and feel. So I always tell people, not only in my art, all the art that's hanging around Bethel, stand in front of it. Receive, oh, receive the impartation. Receive, yes, yes. Take that opportunity and receive from what the Lord is giving out at that moment. Yeah, yeah. totally. That's yeah. so powerful, Maddie. I yeah. love it. It's it's like there's something that happens when we have a visual. And, and just for you that are wondering, well, is this biblical? Remember what happened in Numbers 21 with Moses. The people were backbiting. They were complaining about Moses. Moses goes to God and says, God, what am I going to do? He says, I want you to create a bronze serpent that when you look at that, that you'll be healed. And what happened? They looked at it and they were healed. And so God is always wanting to reveal things in, in his word. And this is one of those things. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is great. Isn't that good news? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So you thought that your art was just a piece of paper. But it's supernatural. Oh, God has yes. created it for a reason. And it's just huge. Wow. Um, you know, we've been growing in the arts community here for a long time. And I know a lot of people might say, well, how could I grow with other artists? And and how important is community? Oh, and so, Nnedi, share mm -hmm. about that. <clears throat> well, recently I was reading this book. Um, me and my husband are both artists, and we try to get a, gather as much information as we can. And it's a secular book. It's not a Christian book, and it's a called art rules and it's it's um how to get your art out there and how to how to sell your art and stuff like that but in in one chapter he was talking about what is the most important thing in commute in community or in developing your art and he, he listed three things number three he says try to make excellent art growing your gifts which is goes with Matthew um, 24 about the talent. Yes, come on. so you grow yeah. in your gift and number two, make distinctive art. Make art that comes from within. This is from within, and God has placed things in you that He's only showing to you to show others That's in right. that moment. And the most important thing that He put there, He said, was to grow in community. Come on, did you hear that? <laughs> community, that was number one. This is a secular Secular, artist. yes. And He Crazy. says, Success in the art world is about relationship. Oh, wow, yes, it is. Come on. It's getting involved, helping others, growing in a place where others want to help you. And that's what we do. Oh, I know, all the time. That's what we do. We teach each other. We, we're there for each other. We pray for each other. We prophesy for each other. We have a good time together. We do. <laughs> we do. And, and it's awesome because in community, God shows you things through different people. And even when they prophesy or don't prophesy in the heart, He yeah. highlights things to you with your community. Yeah. I, I just want to just really, really ask you a question. You have a limited amount of understanding, and then the Holy Spirit comes and He anoints you, like what happened in this painting. But what if you had no one to share it with? Yeah. That's the value of community. Yeah. Not only that, but we we t we talk and we practice techniques together. We practice different types of things to help us to grow as artists. So I want to ask you a question: Who's running with you? Mm. Who do you have that? that you can share your dream with about being a prophetic artist. Yeah. And uh, because there's so many different resources available to you, we we here, we just <laughs> want to be, we want to take everything that we have and impart it to oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so we believe that you can learn from the secular realm just as much as you can from the Christian realm. Mm -hmm. And then our art is meant to go out, not just in church, but out in the marketplace. Absolutely. I know Miguel's art is hanging all over the wine country yeah. um, down in Napa, and yeah. it's because he's made that bridge. Uh, right now, you can buy, I'm wearing my own art. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, Impart Arts, it's I-M-P-A-R-T-S, Impart Arts, I M. In part, and then A R T S. Go ahead, look online, but you can get leggings, you can get iPhone covers. Oh, yeah. You can get prints, you can get all different kinds of stuff, mugs, whatever, because our art is meant to impart, like this painting. Absolutely. Isn't just meant to be looked at once, but it's meant to be repeated, and you can get the same impartation through prints. 
Yeah. Which we're going to talk about in a second. What about if they wear your leggings and someone gets healed? Come on! Because it That's carries right. the anointing just That's like right. Paul. Exactly. Just like Paul with the handkerchiefs. Yeah. It's like, why have we... Why have how why haven't we seen this? We we talk about that all the time. Like it's like God has given us these secrets because God wants to revive yeah. and bring a new renaissance. Absolutely. It's just it's, it's just awesome. huge what God is doing. And yeah. and Nettie, you have a Facebook page too. Yes, it's called Nettie's Art Studio, which is N E R Y Art Studio. It's in Facebook. All my artists there, the meanings and everything. everything. Please go in, comment, love it, receive from it, enjoy it. Get it. Get it. Get <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, the other thing too is if you like the arts on stage but you're wondering, well, what was that person thinking when they created? Or maybe the camera just shot a quick view and you weren't able to see it. So all of our art is on a Facebook page just for you. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Official Bethel Reading Arts on Stage Facebook page. And we just want to encourage you to look at that, get inspired. I mean, there's so many times when I'll be traveling and I'll look on that page and I'm going, oh, there's Nettie's work, there's whatever. <laughs> you get to know the artist. Oh, yes. You can review it from past mm -hmm. times, but we really want to encourage you to look at that and to be inspired to go even further. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we have awesome artists. Right? We do. We have awesome artists. And you can have them too. Mm -hmm. So like, I also get my book, Born to Create. Oh. I also have other things that you can get awesome. to help book. you on the journey of how to get started in it. Mm -hmm. But now, Nettie, you brought some, some prints. I, I just want to, yes, definitely yes. share this print. I'll hold that for you. Well, this print, um, the Vicar of Baghdad was speaking that night, which I didn't know he was talking that night. I had no idea. So, which is funny. Yeah. So this is actually my grandson. And a photo I took and I just, you know, put everything else. Beautiful. And I titled this Born to Walk on Water. In other words, come on. The kids don't have a junior Holy Spirit. That's right. They were born to do the same things we are do. And and that night, the vicar was talking exactly about that, about his kids in, in Iraq, how he's um, showing them that they can live a life of supernatural, yeah. nothing's impossible. And he just wanted it very bad to put it in the school over there. And, and these kids basically mm -hmm. are dealing with what they might be dead the next day. They yeah. live with life and death. I mean, mm -hmm. it's such an incredible, tumultuous place. Yeah. But this actually grabbed his heart and oh, the yeah. original went to him mm -hmm. and there's something about how can art speak to the next generation yes and how yes. can it be like i mean everyone every child who looks at that is going to go oh jesus is with me yeah that's how i can go through yes. any kind of situation Absolutely. and i can learn to walk on yeah water. so he said he wanted to put it in a very predominant place in the school so all the kids could Wow. You know it's that your art is impacting kids that later on will grow up and just keep taking this to the rest of the world. That's exactly right. Now the great thing about you is this art's gonna live way up way past you. Oh yeah. I mean who knows what Absolutely. how many generations Isn't that exciting? Yes, come <laughs> on. This is what's so That's huge. So exciting. This is yeah. amazing. Wow. Nettie, I love this piece. This is so incredible. Thank you. Isn't it amazing that you, that God has, He's actually given you art that is going to shape history. Yeah. But if you did, if you were afraid, you would have never have even oh, yeah. launched into that. Mm -hmm. You could have been sitting, watching TV, watching my kids, <laughs> watching your kids. And never ever yeah. understanding that the gift that you yeah. have yeah. was meant to touch thousands and thousands of people watching and yeah. people buying it yeah. and schools it's now. Crazy. Crazy. It's just unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It just I mean, rocks my world. I've always had a passion for the arts since I was a little girl. I mean, they took me to the museums and school trips and, and it so impacted me. But I never knew how to do this. I didn't go to school. I went to business school. I took care of my kids, a full-time <laughs> mom, and this was always hidden inside of me until God wow. unlocked it in the right moment, and it's impacted so many people. But one thing I was, I was afraid. I yeah. was afraid. I said, oh, I will ruin the canvas. I don't know what I'm, because I didn't go to art school. Totally. I'm, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how this paint works. Yeah. So someone prayed for me and just took off all fear. 
Come on. And I have not stopped it since I've been taking the risk. And I say, Holy Spirit, if I'm making a mistake on something that's not coming out, it's because you're trying to teach me how to do it the right way. Come on, there you go. Is you're trying to teach me how to do it the right. So don't get frustrated or, or, or like, oh, I'm doing it wrong. It's not coming out right. No, just press in. Yeah. Press in because he wants to teach you how to do it the right way. Yeah, you know, yeah. we share about that process because I think that is where a lot of people stop. Is that they get frustrated mm -hmm. because they're trying to make everything perfect. Exactly. And then what happens, then they never learn a new way of Absolutely. what God wants to show them. Absolutely. And, and it's so funny in history, you look at like, okay, Picasso is so different than Michelangelo. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many different types of creative ways that God speaks to people. And why do we think that, um, that everyone would want to look at the same picture? No one wants to look at the same picture. No. And some people, like, they'll look at all these different pictures and go, oh my gosh, that picture is for me. Yeah. And so we have to just kind of wash ourselves away yeah. from the thoughts that art has to be perfect yes, through our eyes yeah. when God is anointing it because he has a, a specific reason. Absolutely. But Absolutely. share about share a little bit about, like, how the presence of God comes upon you as you create so that they can get a glimpse of that. Well, first of all, I start praying and so I start asking the Lord, I say, Lord, what do you want? What are you saying? What do you, you know? Yeah. I don't say who it's for because he knows who it's for. That's not my problem. That's not my totally. He knows. I just got to take the risk of what he's given me. Mm -hmm. I look at many images that kind of relates to that, and I'm like, okay, this kind of, well, not this. Well, well and I get an you idea. You look on Google. Yeah, I look. So I even go, I Google even, is legal. If yeah. you're a Christian, Google is your best friend. And YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, type in how to paint a tree. It will show you how to paint a tree. Come on. <laughs> so I start going and I start sketching of what I feel like it's going. And sometimes I start sketching, it comes out totally different. Yeah, I love it. And I'm like, okay, this is where you want me to go. And it's it's one thing you sketch and then one thing you paint. So totally. once I put it on there and I'm seeing, okay, this is not coming out this way. Mm -hmm. And you start following. You, you may not think it's the Holy Spirit, but it is because he's teaching you as he goes on. Yeah. And with all of this, with worship music on and praying for God's presence and anointing to come on it, um, there have been times that I have stopped, take a break, go cook, go attend the, the grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped. And when I come back, I feel the presence of the Lord so much. Like it's like the fear of God. I'm like, oh God. Yeah. And it's so to. powerful. And then I continue. Sometimes I cry, and sometimes I'm like, oh boy. And then and I keep interceding for whoever someone's heart. But not to mention, there are times when the enemy comes and start putting lies and talking to you. Oh, you're not good enough. So now you this can't is. Do it. Now, now you have to realize, she's been doing this for eight years. And she's had this. And so this this is something that's so important that we understand this principle. Mm -hmm. I want you to pray for them. I want oh, you yeah. just to, like, because yeah. there's a lot of people that have that struggle. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. The enemy wants to rob you of peace. Absolutely. Uh, I, just, I just feel there are artists out there that have this fear uh, they're gonna ruin it. No, you're not. Daddy God takes whatever you makes and puts it in his refrigerator and shows all the angels. Look how awesome she did it or he did it. <laughs> Look what a great job. Yeah. It's us that we have to stop listening to the lies that the enemy puts us of saying it's not good enough because it is. And he doesn't want it to for you to put it out there because it's gonna touch someone's heart. Like I said, I had a friend that did stick people and they were very anointed stuff. <laughs> That's right. So I just want to say in the name of Jesus, I take off all fear yeah, that's been put on. upon you. I like some of some of you I feel like it's a heavy brick on your head. Yeah. And I remove that right now in Jesus' yes, name. Oh, yes. I remove oh. that fear. And I say to you, go, run, arise, artist, arise, arise for the kingdom of God. It is just so powerful what God has for you. If the enemy is talking lies, it's because it's something big that God is doing. That's, That's one right. thing I've always told myself. Right. When I hear these things, I say, God, it's because you're going to touch someone powerfully for, with it. That's why the enemy doesn't want me to do it. So I say, God, come forth, artists. Arise and take your place 
and be in this army of, of renaissance that's happening and changing the world yeah. with our art. Can, can I read something Lance put out? Yes. Uh, so, well, Lance Walnut, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Lance Walnut. He put this out a while, and I just had to read it, and it says, quote, Every time artist struggles with doubt over their creation, the devil hates the creator. So it makes sense that anyone gifted with creativity will be the particular target of his rage. Wow. That's because creativity is something that the enemy can't do. You can't create yes. and only intimidate. Yeah. I, I just want to oh. I want to thank Maddie <laughs> for joining. You're so, so awesome. This and, is awesome. <laughs> and again, you can look um again, check out impartarts.com for just my stuff. Check out her Facebook page, Maddie's Art Studio. And then also with her information, if you want to see more of her paintings and more of the other artists here, check mm -hmm. out our official Bethel Reading Arts on Stage. Come on. Because yeah. you're going to get rocked by sure. that. And we bless you. Keep creating yes. and join us next week. Come on.